Hello again. Welcome back. We are going to continue. I'm pretty sure both of these circuits lead to the same place. Like, uh, last time. This is gonna be another room of water. Yep. I think Byron's already there. Yep, because that's what our objective says. This is fascinating. They were both here, Athena and Cornelius. They had a plan. I found a file that... Oh, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't... I, 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 uh... Uh... Virus trapped in the overload. He's failing to disconnect. The whole system's going haywire. 1K, get out of there. Everyone back to the VTOL. Go. Oh now, okay, get goodness! Moving. We can't just leave Byron behind. Yeah, Coot, we have no idea where he is or what's happening to him. But right now, if we stay here, we could all die. Okay, I gotta go the Byron through it, I guess. Going completely bananas. Energy spikes everywhere. We'll come back for Byron, I promise. What have you done, you fools? Mortals are not meant to tread these halls. Why will you not heed my warnings? I am not trying to harm you, creatures of clay. All I wish is to protect you and the rest of your kind. What more must I do to make you understand? If you cannot be reasoned with, I must bar your path. I don't think we're on any actual time limit, but... No, okay. no. Well, just in case, you know. <laughs> These energy emissions are messing with the VTOL systems. Okay, I think I've got it working. Get here quickly, 1K. I hope this is the right way. Okay, this might this is probably the other door we couldn't go through. Yep. I'm going there as quickly as I can. <laughs> Maybe there's an achievement for speedrunning here. Come on, come on, get in! I tried to jump in. Get us out of here, you coot. Looks like the southern sites are active. The readings are strangely jumbled, though. Should I set us down? Yes, but just to drop off Melville. What? We're going back to New Jerusalem. This situation has gotten out of control. We need to regroup. Rushing in blindly isn't going to save Byron. But we also need someone to stay here and keep an eye on things. Melville, that's you. All right. I'll see if I can make any sense of these systems while you're gone. Just keep a safe distance, okay? Will do. Good. Well, 1K, I guess it's time for you and me to take a nap. Do Whoa. not lose hope, my child. In these difficult moments, find solace in your friends and in the home that you share. Got an update from Melville. The power spikes are continuing, but no news from Byron. All right. Thank you, Yakut. You get the VTOL ready for the next trip. I'll talk to the mayor. 1K, please head over to the Museum of the Simulation and talk to Cornelius. Let's see what he has to say for himself. 
All right, I actually wasn't sure if he would be able to return here <laughs> and explore the city. Uh, the world is full of suffering. Every living organism suffers. Animals kill other animals to eat. And it always ends with death torn apart or wasting away. This is what surrounds us. This is what's happening outside those walls every hour of every day. It's our ethical responsibility as sentient beings to lessen suffering. That's what it means to be human, to understand that it is your duty to transform this world into something better. That's what the Founder meant when she said that we can turn the world into a work of art. Despite what happened to him, Byron was right. We have to keep going. This is blasphemy. Byron was punished for failing the Founder's trials, and you want us to dig deeper? Just because you can't accept that suffering is natural and necessary? Please, everyone, stop using the public frequency. If you want to argue, use your interface or speak in person. Yeah, uh... Interesting statements there. I mean... I think... It's kind of difficult to lessen the suffering of some animals because they're so ingrained in their ecosystem that they evolved to basically enjoy living that life in a way. And the, you, there are ways to lessen the suffering in some ways, but like, you still gotta let them live a life that they were evolved for. So basically, you're just gonna put a VR headset on them or something, put them in a simulation that they'll enjoy. That doesn't seem... I don't know, there's, there's not really a good answer there that I'm aware of. But yeah, I guess we missed some of the stuff we could have do could have done in the prologue. Uh, I didn't realize we would be gone for so long. I thought we would be able to fast travel back or something, but <laughs> uh, yeah. If there was any dialogue twists that I've missed, uh, too bad. You, if you can do them in your playthrough and see what the differences are, feel free to tell me in the comments. City News, the expedition to the Founder's Island has suffered a serious setback as all contact with Byron was lost during a foray into the interior of the megastructure. Byron is assumed to be alive, but trapped within a data stream overload and unable to disconnect. Several sources in the government expressed a lack of surprise in this turn at this turn of events, citing the first companion's history of rash behavior. Mayor Hermanubis gave Byron this job to appease a certain segment of the population, one source told me, but from what we're hearing, that segment is shrinking rapidly as people realize that Byron's ideas are too uh, utopian for the real world. Hmm. No, I think Byron just kind of rushed ahead into things. Gym effects 3112 now open. Or 312, not 3112. I'm very happy to announce that the Gehenna Memorial Interactive Fiction Exhibition is now open to visitors. Come play the three winning works at the Gehenna Memorial Pavilion. Finally, can't wait. Wonderful news, I'll be attending today. Nice. Will these be made available through the interface too? Yes, after the exhibition is over. Optimist. The pessimist is commonly spoken of as the man in revolt. He is not. Firstly, because it requires some cheerfulness to continue in revolt. Secondly, because pessimism appeals to the weaker side of everybody. And the pessimist, therefore, drives as roaring a trade as a uh, publican. Publican? Hmm, that's not another word I'm not familiar with. The person who is really in revolt is the optimist, who generally lives and dies in a desperate and suicidal effort to persuade all the other people how good they are. It has been proved a hundred times over that if you really wish to enrage people and make them angry, even unto death, the right way to do it is to tell them that they are all the sons of God. Jesus Christ was crucified, it may be remembered, not because of anything he said about God, but on a charge of saying that a man could in three days pull down and rebuild the temple. Every one of the great revolutionists, from Isaiah to Shelley, have been optimists. They've been indignant not about the badness of existence, but about the slowness of men in realizing its goodness. The prophet who was stoned is not a brawler or a marplot. Another word I'm not familiar with. He is simply a rejected lover. He suffers from an unrequited attachment to things in general. Another Chesterton quote that I'm not entirely sure how to interpret or form an opinion on just yet. R.I.P. Byron, R.I.P. Byron, TLDR, R.I.P. Byron. We don't know that he's dead. He may just be lost. He could still be saved. 
I was going to say something sarcastic, but you know what? In the spirit of optimism, I really hope so. Is it just foggy or rainy or... What's up? Why are the windows... The windows were clean before, right? Why is it all grey outside? Maybe the windows were a bit dirty before, I don't remember. I think the game was loading a bit there. I think it was also loading at the start of that, uh, sleep mode session. And that's why it was lagging briefly. Good old elevator loading screens. Interesting music. Milton's Rest, Tablets of the Founder, Alexander Drennan Memorial, Museum of the Simulation, the Hannah Memorial Pavilion, Friends, oh, Friends of New Jerusalem Gazebo. Well, I think we know what order to do things in. Welcome back. Oh, thank you. Hi, 1K. <laughs> right, everybody was watching the expedition. I guess. I guess information gets around fast in these places. What was that 666 person at the start trying to even do if everybody was gonna know what I was doing anyway? Rate 1000 citizens the ideal number of humans, live in harmony with nature, maintain balance in all things, be respectful towards each other, respect the traditions of our people, be mindful of the mistakes of our ancestors, be thankful to his progenitor, Alexander Drennan. Be thankful to the Keeper of Memories, Arkady. And be, uh, keep bright the memory of Gehenna and his people who found peace. Oh, I've seen you on the social network. Founder bless you, 1K. Now is the time of our great testing. The deceiver Byron has been slain. And we must turn away from the path of sin, or suffer the same fate! Ah, uh, because the values he teaches are evil. He wants to violate the Earth with human filth, blacken the skies and kill the oceans. The tools of the sinner cannot be used to raise the sinner's palace. Never forget that, 1K. Okay. Be 
Be prudent. Conserve energy. Frivolous behavior harms everyone. So you're saying I shouldn't run. <laughs> Hi, 1K. Thank you. Hello, I, I mean. <laughs> you can tell I don't get out much. You must be 1K. Nice to meet you. Despite how strange everything has become in this city. It seems to me that we're slowly forgetting all the lessons Alexandra Drennan tried to teach us. Becoming less human. Um... These are... I don't really like either of these options. Can I get a third option, please? <laughs> No, it isn't. But I don't know what I can do about it. You might be able to sway a few people, though, if you try. Uh... Why the fixation on Alexander Jinnan? I mean, she was just one of the people that helped make this possible. I mean... That does make her important, but like... Not this level of important. You shouldn't be putting this much attention on one single person. Have a nice day. I mean, I guess those are opportunities for me to learn about that person's opinions. But, uh, I'm not sure I want to at this time. Oh. The answer that came to me again and again was play. Every human society in recorded history has games. We don't just solve problems out of necessity. We do it for fun. Even as adults. Leave a human being alone with a knotted rope, and they will unravel it. Leave a human being alone with blocks, and they will build something. Games are part of what makes us human. We see the world as a mystery, a puzzle, because we've always been a species of problem solvers. DNA is information transmitted across time. The living and the dead are part of the same chain, bound together by chemistry. That's true of all species. But humanity has taken this bond further. Thanks to technology, we have access to the thoughts and ideas of people whose physical bodies are long gone. Like you listening to me now. Even though I'm definitely dead at this point, you're part of that chain. You have the capacity to remember. Nearly everything on this planet from the surface of the Earth to the composition of the atmosphere itself has been shaped by life. It's a process that takes millions of years. But we humans, with our technology, with our understanding and manipulation of systems, have changed everything in just a few centuries. I think that's also part of what makes us human. We reshape the world in our image. It's how we create ourselves and how we destroy ourselves. When I was in ninth grade, my parents took me to Pompeii. At first, I was amazed by the feeling of walking through an ancient city. But then I suddenly got scared. I realized that I was walking through a real place, where real people had lived. People like myself, with mothers and fathers and lives and hopes and dreams. And now it was all gone forever. I ran to my father, crying, and told him about this. And he said, I remember so clearly, he said, Yes, but we are here. So long as there are people in the streets, the past isn't really gone. I wonder what this one would have been. Was it like this at the beginning of the game? Or maybe it'll open up later? I know we're missing one about Talos, 
The Talus Principle. And I'm sure there's others that I'm forgetting as well. Hmm. I wonder why they have this one blocked off so you can't even interact with it. Me. Uh, are there any signs to tell me where to go here? Oh, what's that actually? Hi. Hello. Archaeological gardens. I was already in there, right? Milton's Rest. Right. Wait, what? Next cat? What? Wait, so that was a cat named Milton. I was like, what did- I thought we were- this was Milton about Milton Library's assistant. I guess. Oh! This is something somebody spoiled for me. Somebody told me you can pet the cat in this game. Oh, that was quite a strange animation just now. are nice. But, uh, you shouldn't let them roam outside freely, because they're bad for the ecosystem. At least in most parts of the world, or some parts of the world. Good luck, 1K! Thanks! Alright, that's where I was. Okay. Wait, what? Did that... Did that objective marker just move? Did it teleport? And yeah, now it's over there. Excuse me? Huh? Uh... I'm not sure what's happening, to be honest. Constant, remember the goal. Direction is unchanging. Uh, yeah, lots of propaganda around here, huh? Humans invented complex magnification devices in order to better understand the component parts of the world they inhabited. This led to major discoveries in biology, physics, philosophy, and many other fields. A jigsaw puzzle. Ancient humans derived meaning and enjoyment from problem-solving activities, as noted by the progenitor Alexander Jernin. While the item on display was created for small children, ancient humans of all ages voluntarily engaged in such activities. I do not like... I do not like the association of jigsaws with puzzles. I don't like calling them jigsaw puzzles, I just call them jigsaws because... They're nothing at all like the, the puzzles in these kinds of games. The word puzzle is too vague and broad. You know, I've wanted to make, like, some kind of video essay on it or something, but, like, the, the word puzzle is just... It's used to describe too many different things. It's too much of an umbrella term. It's too all-encompassing. We need... 
more words, better vocabulary to describe the different kinds of puzzles that exist. Because you would never put a jigsaw in the same category as Portal 2. They're, they're just completely unrelated. But if there's a jigsaw game on Steam and Portal 2 on Steam, they're both going to have the puzzle tag. And there's not really... they're, they're both going to be in the puzzle category. And there's not really going to be a way to filter out one or the other. Which is really frustrating. An ancient human projectile weapon used in hunting, warfare, law enforcement, crime, and personal protection. Produced en masse and used around the world. On average, ancient humans killed hundreds of times the population of New Jerusalem per year. Ah, uh, yeah. Unfortunate. The ancient human mastication apparatus required frequent maintenance. This device is theorized to be an advanced electrical tool for this purpose, although some scholars maintain that its actual use was ritualistic and intended to mark the sunrise and sunset. <laughs> oh wow, the archive's corruption is pretty bad. A simple utensil used to transport nutrients to an ancient human's mouth, often found in conjunction with a knife and spoon. A painted edition of the complete works of Stratton of Strat uh Stagaira, the materialist philosopher who defined the Talus Principle. Edited by Athanosios T. Huber. Yeah, so a lot of their worldview was pretty limited based on what was preserved in the archive versus what was corrupted and lost. And that's uh that's probably why probably why Athena left, it's because they're so stuck in the past and stuck on this small worldview. And there's like a whole bunch of other stuff to consider. You know, what she was doing with Miranda and all that. I can see why she left. And just didn't really have the words to tell people. An inflatable sphere used in the popular ancient human game known as football or soccer. This game was played around the entire globe and aroused great passion in its followers. It was also simula often simulated digitally, most notably in the form of football glory. 99. <laughs> That's the most notable one? Yep, so much corruption in the archive. Currency was an ancient human medium of exchange which played a significant role in their systems of labor and resource distribution. Intense conflicts sometimes erupted over the possession of these objects, leading to injuries or even deaths. Yep. Star Trek economy! It's gonna be quite a difficult adventure to get from where we are now to where we could be so much better. Massage aid used by ancient humans to combat muscle fatigue and other physical ailments common to biological organisms. This prevented pain, the ancient human equivalent of error codes 704, 705, and 921 to 932. <laughs> Wasn't one of these error codes the one that was mentioned when we were in the first area? By one of the companions? piece of sanitary hardware used to dispose of biological excretions resulting from food and water intake required to power ancient human biology. Such hardware was connected to a vast network of subterranean pipes leading to wastewater treatment facilities. A classic example of ancient infrastructure used to control their impact on the environment. Yep, that's one of the things that gets talked about with ancient Rome and all that. Viaducts. Hello. Hey, you're not Cornelius. There's multiple cats. 
Are our metal hands warmed up at all? Like, I can't imagine it would be particularly pleasant to be petted by cold metal hands, you know? Oh, it's you. 1K. You're back from the expedition. Let's not talk about me. Let's talk about that replication technology you found. You have to get a hold of it, 1K. You have to. If you don't, I think I'm going to die of loneliness. And I think this whole city is going to slowly suffocate. I mean, do you really think the founder would have designed such a large city if she intended for us to stop at a thousand inhabitants? That's not even enough to fill a village. Uh, <laughs> that would be a pretty large village, actually. What? Why are these my options? Excuse me? I can't pick a neutral middle of the road option? Well, I'll just appease the guy. Thanks. I don't know how much longer I can go on feeling like this. Whoa, what was that lag spike there? What is that? Why is it outside, almost? Where's that? That's, that's a big building, I guess? Huh. Uh, where should I go from here? I thought there was other stuff, right? anything in this one? No? This is just decorative, I suppose? Okay. Don't mind me just splashing in the water of your museum. citizens. The Gehenna Memorial Interactive Fiction Exhibition is now open to visitors. However, please note that due to an unauthorized strike, public transport will be temporarily unavailable. May the founder be with you. I guess I passed through a trigger there. Probably because that's near the entrance to where I need to find Cornelius and uh, they don't want me to forget about the newly available thing. I guess I've done all that, I suppose. Museum of the Simulation. How do I get there? Oh, I guess that's that's what my objective is, right. And a Memorial Pavilion, Friends of New Jerusalem Gazebo. Uh, okay. Good to There's see also you, people along to talk to in there, but I'll do that in a bit. Let's head over here first. Alright, I guess that's just a hangout spot. Okay, so, we actually cannot explore as much of this city as I was afraid we would have to. Okay, we just get this little area here. And, uh, wherever it is that everything else is at, like where people live and such, it's, uh... I guess on the other sides of these walls and such. What is going on here? Transportation must be safe. We deserve a functional city.
Hello, 1K. It's a pleasure to finally meet you. Shame it couldn't be under better circumstances. Byron is a hero to many of us. Yesterday, there was a sudden brownout in the grid and we almost had a derailment. We've been warning the mayor for months and all he ever gives us is waffle about the goal. This can't go on. Wow, <laughs> they really give you a whole spectrum of options here. Thank you. Your support means a lot to us. We need to get through to people. Miss Simulator, a short, punchy work of games as commentary. Do you agree with the conclusion it suggests? Jefferson Goldblum and the Spectre of Modernity by Rat. Another story in the much celebrated Jefferson Goldblum shared universe, originated in Gehenna, maintains the characteristic writing style of the series but focuses on a new set of themes. Ghost of Atlantis, a lyrical, atmospheric quasi sequel to Atlantis, a classic work created by Lilith. The original game told the story of the inundation of the mythical island, no doubt reflecting the impending fate of the citizens of Gehenna. Yeah, that was my interpretation too. Hmm. Ghosts of Atlantis, written and designed by Corazon. Dedicated to the people of Gehenna. Gently, your ship touches down on the land that once was the Isle of Atlantis, which in the days before the waters receded lay deep under the Sea of Atlantis. You have come to find the last legacy of your ancestors. The red sun burns bright in the sky, scorching the dying earth. Begin your pilgrimage. Journey to the Broken Tower, Journey to the Lost Shore, Journey to the Temple of the Owl, or Journey to the Temple of Serpents, or Journey to the Ancient Farmlands. So we have five options here. Hmm. On the northern shores of the island, where the frozen ocean once stretched to the horizon, and the remains of a tower. Here lived a great magician who advised the King of Atlantis in matters of the sublime. Approach the tower. There is very little left of the once impressive structure. To anyone else, it would be a pile of rubble covered in black, dried out moss. But you can see a glimpse of its past, of the craft that went into its making. By the tower stands the ghost of the magician awaiting you. Speak to the magician ghost. Oh my. A great marvel was revealed to me in this tower, the magician says. A glimpse of the sublime. And although I am dead, and my soul has spent an aeon under the sea, that vision is not lost to me. Even now, I could summon it and reveal it fully. He pauses. If I do, I will finally witness the sublime in all its glory, he says. But I believe that in this moment, my soul will be annihilated. Is that a fate I should embrace or reject? What are these choices? Excuse me? Like... This is a really complicated problem, and you're just gonna split it to a binary dichotomy here? I mean, he said he's lived for eons as a ghost, right? And he- but... we- do we even know if he wants to continue 
to be existing like this. Maybe he doesn't want to exist like this anymore, or... You know, maybe there'll be technology or magic in the future that can bring him back if he wants to be brought back to the world of the living. There's, there's so many different things to consider here, and you're just gonna make me say either it's a liberty or a sin? Ah... Well... Let's just pretend that time trap will be discovered eventually and they can bring it back if they need him. You speak wisely, the mission says. I have lingered here too long. He, t he turn away from you instead of turn. So there's- is that a typo? Is that intentional or unintentional? He turn away from you towards a world beyond your sight. A bright light suffuses him and you cannot tell whether the magician is laughing or screaming. Then he is gone. Well... Well, we're already at a shore, right? So this shouldn't be too far away, unless it's like an opposite end shore. <laughs> Your journey takes you to a wasteland that was once a beach where children from the Atlantean capital of Luna came to play. Here stands the ghost of the poet, contemplating the dying sun that fills the sky. Speak to the poet. That was a very wide dialogue option. I never completed my great work, he says. There were too many priests and censors who interfered, who did not allow me to create what I intended because they feared the free and true expression of poetic genius. And then came the earthquakes and the waves, and long ages under the sea, and now this time of burning death. Yet still I long for its completion, my soul imagines what could have been. Again, we have a- another binary dichotomy. Uh, either we say that he must accept that your work cannot be finished, you are dead, or we say you must refuse your death and find a way of completing the great work. Like, clearly we're communicating with this ghost right now. Someone could just come over here with a bunch of paper and writing utensils and just write down whatever the ghost says and let that be his great work and then he can be satisfied and pass on, right? I think in the context of the Talos Principle 2 though, it's about, you know, this game seems to have a message in it, a theme, a motif, about holding on to the past versus letting go of it. You know, everyone here, there's like, we're in a whole museum area about the past and what came before. And they're obsessed with things that people said a long time ago and those people aren't even here anymore. They've gone off elsewhere to do their own thing because they didn't like how things were here. And they're still obsessed with the things that they thought were said by that person and all that, it's just... I can see how this is related. But I'm not happy with the presentation here. These are both kind of bad options, in my opinion. Uh... Well, let's just go with the same option as last time. Goodbye, ghost. Then I curse you all, time and space and people, and gods too, the ghost says angrily. You have strangled the one true thing I had inside me. The one truly good and noble thing this wretched mind and body ever contained. I curse your indifference, your lack of imagination, and your infinite stupidity. The ghost burns bright with rage for a moment, and then it is gone. Yeah, that's, uh, that's about right. Apparently our character is too stupid to think of anything other than those two options.
Well, we're in the Lost Shore, which was once a beach and all that, so the, lo the ancient farmland is probably not too far off, right? Let's go there. This soil used to be rich, life-giving. Generations of humans relied on it to survive. Then the waves came, and after the waves, the dying sun. Now that all life is gone, something has been revealed underneath the soil. A city of unimaginable antiquity. The ghost of the farmer waits in its ruins. Speak to the farmer. This city is older than the capital, the ghost tells you. It is older than Atlantis itself. When our most distant ancestors huddled in terror before thunder and lightning, this city was already old. And yet this city is not foreign to us. We too are its citizens. He looks directly at you, and there is a light in his eyes that is not of this world. Are you willing to swear fealty to this city across the boundaries of time and space? What? Excuse me? What are you asking me to do? No, this is not what I want. How do I... How do I go to a different website? Uh, there used to be a way to go to Google in this, but I don't know what it is now. Um... Here, I'll just open it another window, I suppose. Define fealty for me, please. A fealdo tenets or vassal's sworn loyalty to a lord. Or, formal acknowledgement of loyalty to a lord. Uh, okay, it's a historical noun. Well, yeah, that's kind of what I thought. Uh, no. Then the city will not be there for you when you need it, and you will fail. But you are young, so very young. You will find the city elsewhere, in time, and have another opportunity. The ghost fades into nothingness. This is kind of reminding me a little bit of, uh, Final Fantasy XIII. <laughs> or no, not XIII, X. Final Fantasy X, that's the one, it's FFX, right? Yeah, Final Fantasy X is the one it's reminding me of. Um... Farms have to deal with snakes, right? You make your way to the Temple of Serpents, which once was the greatest hospital in all of Atlantis. The sick and the injured came here from all across the island, hoping that salvation could be found in its halls. All that is left of the temple is a labyrinth of low walls, and the ghost of the physician waiting for you. It is faint, barely visible. I worked here day and night for many years, and I saved countless lives, the physician says. And yet, of all the lives that I saved, only one survived the death of the island. A young messenger who escaped on one of the ships thanks to another sacrifice. And I have wondered many times since, was my work in vain? The burden of this question is eroding my soul. Their options are no because death comes to us all in the end. Or death comes to all in the end, not us all. No because the messenger is my ancestor. No because he who saves one life saves all lives. No, because all lives are worth saving, no matter the future. All things are in vain unless we choose to believe differently. Interesting. This is just one of those comfort sayings. This is kind of a selfish interpretation, I suppose. This depends on a lot of context, and, you know, the trolley problem is a thing that exists. And, uh... It's obviously a lot more complicated and nuanced than that. Like, I don't like the trolley, trolley problem. I think it's stupid reduction of the actual complexity of the problem. 
I mean, I guess it gets people to think about it, but on its own, the trolley problem is stupid, in my opinion. I'm tempted to say either this or this. I'm gonna pick the bottom one. All things are in vain unless we choose to believe differently. The physician's eyes widen, and he becomes more visible. You are right, the physician says. In my work, I have seen life and death, and I know that to the cosmos, one is the same as the other, but not to me. It is I who find meaning in life. I must choose to continue doing so. Wait. Did we just recruit a ghost? Excuse me? Why is this the only option now? <laughs> I will join you, the physician says. There is still good I can do, even as a ghost. What? This is an option? This is a thing that can happen in this text game? Excuse me? <laughs> Was I accidentally killing off companions earlier or something? That's, uh, not exactly what I expected to happen. I thought that with that insight, he would, you know... Pass on happy or whatever. Uh, okay. I did not want this to happen, but I guess it works. I mean, if he says he wants to stay, so I'll let him stay. I mean, I'm obviously not gonna try and change his mind at this point. What? I can't explore the labyrinth now. Why not? Come on! <laughs> what is with this? This is... How does talking to the physician for, like, a, a couple minutes mean that I can't explore the labyrinth now? Is the couple minutes too much time to spare? Fine. The sun grows bigger and brighter. Time is running short. Okay. Okay. Alright, I understand. Maybe time is running short. Your next stop is the Temple of the Owl. The greatest scientific institution of old Atlantis. Here the ancients tried to understand the secret laws of the cosmos, although their studies did not advance far enough to prevent their fate. Ghosts of the scientists await you in the ruins. This reminds me of that Owlboy game. They uh, also had stuff to do with science in ruins and uh, trying to avoid a fate. Speak to the scientist. I have not rested in death, the scientist tells you. In fact, death has provided ample opportunity for study. I have learned much about the machinery of creation. He hesitates. I would like to join you, but I fear that the truth I have discovered will offend and outrage many. And our options are tell him not to reveal the truth, tell him that the time of such outrage has passed, tell him the truth matters more than anything, Tell him that outrage should not prevent compassion. Tell him to stay behind. This doesn't alleviate his fear. This kind of alleviates his fear, but I don't know if it's true or not. I mean, it... Yeah, like, I, I, I literally don't know if this is true or not. This doesn't alleviate his fear. This doesn't alleviate his fear. Uh, this could alleviate his fear and might be true. Let's try it. Tell him that outrage should not prevent compassion. Brave words, though few can endure their consequences. Still, even merely speaking them is bold, so I will join you and hope that you will stand by them. Alright, apparently we recruited another ghost. <laughs> I was not expecting things to go this way. Continue your pilgrimage. Journey to the palace. You know, when I was a little kid, uh, I thought the word palace, I, I was always misread it as place. And like, I was reading some story about a princess in a place. You know, please come back to the place! And I was like, why, why are they calling it the place? That seems like an, an odd way to describe 
you know, a very important building. <laughs> so, oh yeah, the, the place, come with me to the place. So no, I, I was just a kid and misreading the word because I didn't notice the other A, palace. The palace once stood in the very heart of Luna, the capital of Atlantis. Here, the greatest artists and craftsmen of that long forgotten era built marvels and luxuries that would astound even a traveler from the distant future. But these things, like everything else, are gone now. Only a single remnant of the Atlantean world remains, though it is perhaps the most precious. A great mosaic telling the history of Atlantis, before it waits the ghost of the king. Oh no... I tried to be a good man, the king says, to be kind, to balance justice with mercy, to honor the gods, to support the peasant and the scholar alike. And yet, I failed. Why? And our options are... You failed because you were immoral, and Mother Earth punished you. You did not fail, we are here. All kings must fail, but it is not your fault that you were born a king. You failed because you put yourself above others in hoarded luxury. Well, he just said that he tried to be kind and balance justice with mercy and all that. We don't actually know if he hoarded luxury. Like, maybe he was one of those rare kings that didn't. But then again, a lot of kings would probably think that they did a good job as a king. Yeah, what does he think he failed at? Like, what is- what was the goal that he was trying to succeed at, exactly? And kings aren't always born, you know, sometimes there's like, us usurping that goes on. Uh, you know, some- sometimes kings are adopted. And I mean, you could like, probably, you might be able to even refuse to be adopted, so... But let's just take that simplified approach for now. The king considers your words. I hope that in the future you have built amongst the stars, there are no kings, he says, and no servants either, but only free citizens. Oh, we can ask the king to join us? That's our only option, apparently. The king lays his ghostly crown aside. I will join you, but only as a man. Yeah, he seems okay. Examine the mosaic. What mosaic? Did I, did I forget about a mosaic? The mosaic is a work of superb beauty. A great work of history and humanity. In it, you will see reflected all the hardship, tragedy, hope, triumph, and heartbreak of your ancestors. This is what you came to find. Retrieve the mosaic. You cannot retrieve the mosaic alone. The forces of time are too powerful, and the strength of a single person is not enough. Oh no, do we have enough ghosts? We only have three. Even with the help of the ghosts, you cannot entirely pry the mosaic loose from the morass of history. But you succeed at removing a large part depicting the golden age of the island. It will have to do. Well... <laughs> okay then, return to your ship. A strange, bittersweet feeling filled your heart as you returned to your ship. You did not fail, yet so much was lost. Could you have done better? Should you have? As the sun engulfs the earth, you wonder what will be remembered of your own time. The end. Thank you for watching.